Hi, welcome. I'm Stefan. Last week I was at Geo Week and well, I attended a workshop uh, there, and I got quite some requests if I could share my my talk. But unfortunately, it wasn't recorded um, by Geo Week. So uh, since I received so many requests uh, for the slides or for the presentation, I decided to just yeah record it again for you. Uh, in our office. So, um, yeah, the title is Modeler and AI as a team for fast scan to BIM. And um, I will show you what we mean with that in the future of AAC industry and in particular modeling point clouds from laser scans of buildings. So, we at our rivers developed an AI. And this AI is searching for objects within point clouds of buildings or industrial facilities. So a user can upload the laser scan and then the AI, the AI will search for objects like walls, windows, doors, pipes, pipe fittings and so on. And this makes a point cloud as interactive as a CAD model. You can use this information that the neural network found uh, as a database or directly stream it into Revit. So what does it mean with the AI founds objects? Usually um, the, the neural network, and uh, usually the point cloud is one solid piece. So it's one huge point cloud and you cannot interact with it at all except of slicing it or cutting through it. So when we say we have point cloud objects, that means that you can select them you can select the objects, you can crop around the objects. We have these layers because we know what the object is. For example, in this laser scan, you can say I only want to see the, the, the pipe accessories, for example, the valves, and then you can select the valves, you can rotate around it and so on. So rotating around an object is already a huge benefit because before there was just no way to interact somehow with it and now you can see yeah that I can just activate the, the pipes in purple and the fittings in black and the steel in, in green and of course the pipe accessories in uh, in gold right so uh, in this particular uh, video that you see here uh, it is a navis scan and in this navis scan you can yeah just so that's what you usually see in the color scan and then you can just turn into uh, our reverse colors, so what the AI found on layers, and you can interact with it. And so this was the first thing. And the second thing is when modeler and I works together. So what does that mean? Again, you can see here the point cloud is divided into objects, and we know what are the yeah the classes of these objects. For example, the doors, and um, yeah, uh, you can for example just uh, use it as a cut model using the layering uh, functions but you can also draw uh, with the, the with the AI so and we follow the strategy then it's not fully automatic the strategy is here that the modeler is modeling himself or herself so um, if I for example want to draw a floor plan then uh, I do it myself but as fast as possible and this means assisted by the AI I will show you quickly how that works. For example, if you just have walls, windows, doors in the layer, you all basically already have a, a floor plan, but it's still a point cloud. So if I would like to draw a wall, I hover over it with the mouse, I get a proposal from the AI in yellow, and so as soon as I click that proposal, the wall is drawn. So it's no automatic modeling, it's manual modeling, but as fast as possible. So I don't have to take care about thicknesses i don't have to place it i just search for it by hovering over with the mouse and then by clicking in, i accept it so the role of the modeler is more quality control while the role of the ai is doing the detailed work and um, one thing of our ai is that it can learn very fast so it can uh, learn objects very fast, new objects very fast. We started at the rivers by training walls, windows, doors, furniture. Later we saw we listened to our customers and um, they said the most uh, the most time consuming things are yeah 
things with angles, many angles in 3D, for example, roofs and trusses. So we trained the neural network to be able to um, detect these beams and columns. Later on, we uh, trained for pipes, valves, fittings, and so on, also stairways and railings. And in 2003, we started with um, sleepers. So for railways, we have uh, rails, tracks, the, the rail tracks, the sleepers, ducts, and then many more. Yeah, I will just give a brief overview of what the, uh, the AI is capable. Um, usually I have three slides for this, for uh, time issues I only brought one of this. So the first and main thing here is object detection. The neural network detects these objects, as you can see in the images. It ranges from, from walls, windows, doors, over pipes, fittings to rail tracks. A second thing is the AI can also detect noise. So if you have uh, um, a noise that you see, can see down there, uh, you can simply remove it, right? So if you get a noisy scan, the AI is uh, able to, to remove that, that scan. And there are other capabilities, for example, building references between objects and so on. Uh, but these are, these are not important for the use cases I will propose today. So. Use case one is modeling beams and trusses. So we have a customer, Mr. Kopfschlegel, and he had to model these uh, these beams and columns, and it's quite uh, quite some work. So he estimated to to uh, that it takes him 20 hours to model this, but actually he needed only 10. And um, usually, and the most time usually you spend with these three angles is uh, yeah getting the right viewport. So with Aurivus, um, you can do it as follows. If you draw a, a beam here, yeah, as soon as you place it, you will see the next beam. So if I draw that beam, the next one appears. We, we say that the, the AI will, will guide you through drawing and uh, beam by beam, it is placed. And that's just how it gets much faster. So in this, uh, and that the, the AI doesn't have to be trained on the particular building. Yeah, for example, this building is a very old building. Uh, I'm sure that this, uh, this, there are no, no rabbit families or something for that, but the AI can still uh, recognize the beams and columns. And if you imagine to uh, draw all these beams and make section views for all these, that is a time consuming task. So this will take very long um, and using our AI, this can just help. Yeah, for example, you can just yeah, usually the view on the beams is blocked, for example, by a roof. And here you can just um, remove the roof and then you see perfectly through it. Or also walls, right? So what I also like in this in this example is that these windows are quite old, yeah, from old castle, but the neural network still detects their windows. And you can then interact with it, remove all the furniture and see perfectly through the objects. All right. So Mr. Kopfschlegel said actually that it's the first time he's looking forward now to model roofs and trusses. That means that this task is an enjoyable task. Usually it's hard to see, especially if the point clouds are, are black and white. But with this, with this um, tool, it's, it's an enjoyable task and it's really fast and gains your time. All right. So uh, here is uh, it's, uh, it's, yeah, an, just an example for uh, one of our customers. So it was not exactly that uh, that video, but uh, it was similar. So when you at the moment here, there's nothing modeled so far. But uh, how can you start modeling? Yeah, just select an object, select an object, and then in our rivers you can press a button. And when you press that button, you have a perfect viewport of two perpendicular or three perpendicular windows. So you have a perfect front view and you have a perfect side view. And again, if you would like to model fully automatically. That might be a problem because in a fully automatic approach, you have many errors and then you have to search for the errors. You can imagine as errors being holes in a big Swiss cheese, right? And if you would like to search for these holes, you would need to slice the complete uh, cheese to find the errors. And here, uh, here we say model it yourself so you can be sure that everything you modeled is, uh, is, is perfect because you modeled it manually with your uh, human brain, right? So 
And so the, the principle here is for the perpendicular views, as soon as I click here, the other view, the other views uh, change their orientation and position for the underlying object. So since we already know the object, we can create you a viewport which shows you directly the front view in the upper left and the side view in the uh, lower left and the top view in the lower right. And now again, if I place the pipe here, the other views update to give you again a, uh, a perpendicular view and so you can really fast draw. So um, this task actually um, is, is manual modeling. But setting up the fuse takes a lot of time. Usually you are so uh, so often, yeah, the, there's so much time just to set up how to see everything. And here you can just remove all the, all the layers and the views follow to give you always a perpendicular view. And perpendicular, perpendicular is very important because when you change angles in one view, or change the change uh, the position in one view, the other view doesn't change. So it's if you have angles which are arbitrarily uh, lying in space, this is a, a very good process to draw. All right. So our customer said they estimated 30 days to model a a a, a heating center room, a heating room, but they only needed 15 days to do it. And again. Uh, Mr. Bindelis from uh, from the set the modeler enjoys modeling because it's just so much easier. So uh, another use case uh, is automatic mass estimation. So in Germany, all the uh, all the uh, all the uh, nuclear power plants are destructed, and it, yeah, it requires quite some logistics for the decontamination of the pipes. So uh, uh, now you could for example, do the 3D scan and then model everything, but that is really time consuming. But we already know the objects. Uh, in this video, you can see that we have objects for pipes and we have objects for fittings. And this means that you can, uh, you can count the objects and, we also, and you can also calculate the surface. And when you calculate, so if you take the number of pipes sorted by diameter, for example, then calculate from the diameter and the length of the pipe junk the surface, you know how much of the surface you need to take down to, to decontaminate it. And then you have the mass which has to be uh, de decontaminated and has to be transported in a logistic um, process. So that actually means that we can save 90% uh, of the costs and calculation of a nuclear power plant with our AI takes only about four hours. Yeah, uh, at our booth we had more uh, use cases. For example, uh, rails, railway stations, and and railways, um, where we started a project with the uh, German Rail Deutsche Bahn company, and um, yeah, I think that were we could show some very interesting things. And of course, you cannot show it our booth because the exhibition is already over. But feel free to reach out to us. Just send us an email. I'm happy to answer all your questions. Thank you very much.